Um, I, I think we definitely progressed. Um, I would say we, we definitely feel more comfortable as a unit. Um, I think some of that's to where we're having consistent starters. We're all, I mean, it's the same starting five from week one till, till now. Um, I think that's helped a lot. Um, I think we've definitely improved in our pass protection, um, for sure, picking up stunts and twists. Florida State, tra traveling down there, another road game. You guys have the last conference road game. How does it feel? Does it, has it kind of gone pretty fast for you? Yeah, it, it really has. Um, as, as Coach Swinney always says, we kind of break the season down in four different quarters, and uh, we're heading into the third quarter of our season already. Um, it, it really feels like we just started. Um, I, I remember just getting ready to go down to Atlanta and sitting here talking about Georgia Tech. Um, but it's also very exciting. Um, that means the goals we're trying to accomplish are becoming closer and closer. Um, like you said, last conference road game um, in Tallahassee, great team, going to be a great environment. And I know everyone's excited for it. Yeah, I mean, I would say playing against any good opponent, I mean, number one, we, we have to take care of the ball. Um, I, th I think that's really big because uh, when we played them last year, we, uh, we lost a turnover margin. And against good teams, that's, that's very detrimental. Um, I would say that's number one and just not losing to Clemson, really. Because I mean, on offense, when we were able to move the ball up and down the field, we just weren't able to finish, um, finishing in the red zone, which I think that's something this year we've done really, really well. Um, things like that is what, it, is what it's going to take to beat good teams. Uh, yeah, I think I think preparation, um, having having good and very intentional preparation, um, having a good routine, and some of it I think too is just experience. Um, now I'm going on my fourth year, and one thing you can't replicate, you can't really prepare for, is just in-game experience. And I've been able to have that playing to my freshman year, and then starting the past couple years, um, just kind of having that experience I think is really good because that teaches you how to actually prepare, um, what to expect and kind of helps you build confidence throughout the week. Well, the last two games, you guys have been able to kind of get going the last four minutes before the half and then the first four minutes of the third quarter. What is it about that stretch that, that you guys focus on? Well, it's just, that's one thing Coach always calls the middle eight, um, went in the middle eight. And, I mean, I, I would say, too, I mean, we, we work it in practice. Um, we always work – you know, like two-minute drill, for example. And I think our offense is really built for those kind of moments when, when the clock's running down because we run tempo, we run fast-paced, and we practice that and we're used to that. Um, and then also just whether, whether you're ready for it or not, it just builds a sense of urgency um, and a certain intensity they have to bring because there's only so much time left. Um, and then also we always want to finish well. Um, obviously, at the end of the game, but we want to finish the half well, too. It's great. It's great, and I, I think I think the difference is is definitely visible with I mean how our offense has gotten better from last year, um, and that's something that I know he's he's worked hard he's worked hard on um, getting his body right and stuff like that, um, and I'm, I'm happy for him. I love being an offensive lineman and seeing him 20 yards ahead of me. You know, and that, that goes for any ball carrier, um, but I mean, and it's good because it brings versatility to our offense for sure. Um, knowing that there's a guy that that can actually run the ball. And, and throw it at the same time and do both well. How do you really see that difference, or that impact of it when you're on that line and, and you're watching this defense have to try and adjust and, and predict where you guys are going when you have that third threat? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean obviously in, in the run game that's big because now they have to account for him. It's, it's not like every single time, even though he's, he's reading, he might be reading the ends that, hey, you know, this guy could actually pull it and actually go for it. And then in, in the passing game, it helps us, too, with, with pass protection. Now the D-line knows and the defense in general that they have to have, you know, rush lane integrity. Um, and they can't just go all over the place, which I think kind of makes certain, I guess, blitzes and pass rushes that have to be more – refined and kind of brought down a little bit and can't be too, too exotic because if you give this guy space in the middle, he can go for it. Um, it definitely helps our, our draws and screens um, because they have to they have to respect the fact that, that he can run the ball. Well, last year, Jermaine Johnson was a handful for all of you guys. Does Florida State have a 
similar similar guys, similar talent on the offense on the defensive line this year. Yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of a lot of those same guys are coming back. I mean, and that's one guy that's not um, coming back. But I mean, I think interior wise, they're bringing back pretty sure everybody. Um, I know they have some some injury stuff going on, but I mean, we, we expect for everyone to be back and healthy um, for when we go down to Tallahassee. Um, and on the ends, even though Jermaine Johnson's gone, I know they have that one end that, that transferred in that, that's that's really good. And seeing him on film, um, so I mean, and they're, they're, they've always been a solid bunch um, up front in the D line, and that's been since I've since I've been here and well before. Um, so it'll be it'll be some good matchups. Well, coming out of last season, there were so many questions about how the offensive line would project for this year that you know lots of fans and media were saying you know the coach needs to dip into the transfer portal or something like that. But, did you guys feel like you had extra stuff to prove coming into this year? Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I feel like when it when it comes to the, when it comes to transfer portal, I mean, I think that was kind of a little bit of a reality check for some guys too. Um, kind of realizing that hey, you know, this is this is serious. We need, we need to pick we need to pick it up a little bit. Um, but but at the same time, we always believed in, in ourselves and each other. Um, and I, and I know Coach Austin always believed in us as well. Um, and a lot of it was just guys having to, you know, grow up and show some maturity um, within the summer um, and, and through spring ball, which I think guys did. I think I think a lot of guys stepped up, showed their maturity, showed their showed their improvement. Um, but I mean, it, it's on us every week, really. Um, whether that is Florida State or Furman or Louisiana Tech or the national championship, I mean, I feel like we go into each week really believing that this game's on us to win or to lose, um, and we just have to prepare accordingly. Um, I think communication has gotten a lot better, kind of going with, with the continuity of it all. Um, and also, I mean, I think for the most part, we're, we're healthy. I mean, we're, we're all healthy. I mean, that game was, was rough. We had guys get banged. I mean, I got, I got banged up pretty bad. And like or not, that's going to, you know, hurt performance a little bit. Um, I think that. And then I think just like I said, everyone's kind of maturing and growing up a little bit. Um, I think we're a little bit better on point of attack moving guys than we were last year. Um, we have the same running backs, and they've gotten, as they've gotten older, they've gotten better. Um, and then also, as, as we've kind of said before, you know, DJ progressing and showing that he can be a big threat in the run game really helps us out, too, with uh, versatility. Dabo talked a lot about how this team has been the hunt. Everybody circles Clemson on their calendar. How at all has this group benefited from the heightened pressure day in or week in, week out? Yeah, well, I mean, pressure is a privilege, right? And I think it, it really makes the best out of all of us. Um, cause like you said, like it or not, ever, everyone's coming for us. And that's something that, that we, that we have to embrace. And I think if you're truly a competitor and you're someone that, you know, wants to be the best, then you have to embrace it each week. Because if we want to, you know, end our season where we want to be, which is being on top, winning the national championship, um, then we have to face the best and we have to be able to defeat that. Um, so I think if anything, each week it, it prepares us for, for our goals that we have in mind. Um, what we want to accomplish, and for the road ahead. Well, you said this is your fourth year here, right? But you have not played Florida State. I mean, I guess you yeah. were going to go down a couple of years ago. What are you anticipating from that environment? I'm sure you know how crazy it can get down. Yeah, I mean, I'm anticipating to be loud. I'm anticipating to get a headache from it being so loud, mm -hmm. not being able to hear anything, uh, hard to think straight. But, I mean, I think at the same time that that's good that we can replicate that stuff in practice. Um, I'm anticipating probably not being able to have to go on a silent count um, or some sorts like that. Um, it's going to be a really fun atmosphere. I know, I mean, they have very loyal fans and they get after it pretty hard too. Um, so it'll be it'll be fun. I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I would say this is for for environment wise, when in, in road games, you'd think that you might be a little hesitant um, for those kind of hostile environments. But for me, and I think I can speak for a lot of my teammates, we kind of embrace that because that's what makes the game it, – it, it's true it makes the game fun. I guess as far as your staff, they've been mostly pretty good. The ones that have not been as good have been really like leaders mm -hmm. back to DJ. I, mean, I think Coach Mania said maybe he got too jacked up on the game with the Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think kind of going back to just in-game experience, I think I think some of that plays a role too because, I mean, you can replicate in practice, but it's just not the same as actually being in the game and actually playing the game through the face mask. Um, and I think kind of throughout, I guess, playing games, I've gotten better with that. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think in-game experience really helps. 
replicate it in practice. You know, we can we're, we have great facilities. We're able to pump noise in um, and stuff like that. That helps out a lot. Um, and just keep on having repetitions, repping it. Where do you guys go from here? What are you talking about in terms of where that next step is? And is it improvement? Are there specific places? Or are you guys looking to maintain and grow just a little where you can? How are you guys approaching I, I would say our, our next big step, number one, is playing complementary football as, as a team. Because, um, I mean, so far we've shown really, really great stuff on offense. We've shown really great stuff on defense, and we've shown really great stuff on special teams, but we have yet to do all of that in the same game for a full game, right? Like, we've done it for maybe like a quarter of football in one game here, maybe a half there, but we haven't done it in a full football game. So I think our biggest challenge um, for us that coaches, you know, brought to us is just playing a complete game from all three phases of football. And then our next actual tangible, like truly tangible goal would be winning the division of the ACC, and, and, and we're close to it. Um, we just we just have a couple more games left. I guess uh, just a random question. Uh, on the walk park, you say one of the most intense things you can do is take a giant sandbag and just walk around uh, yeah. the neighborhood. Uh, so where do you get a giant sandbag? How much does it weigh? Uh, I mean, so what I do is I have, like, just old duffel bags, just like an old duffel bag or whatever. Uh, I went up to Lowe's. Bought bought sand and uh, bu- yeah, I, bu- I bought sand and then uh, like wood pellets. Because if you fill it up with just sand, I mean, it's gonna be like like two hundred fifty pounds. It's gonna be really really heavy. Um, and you can build them different sizes. Like I have a couple different size ones, sand and wood pellets. How much it weighs exactly, I'm not sure. Um, probably maybe the one, the bigger one, probably maybe around like one hundred fifty pounds. And then the smaller one, maybe around like like thirty pounds. But the smaller one's just a little backpack. And I use that one to kind of more like just throw and stuff like that, work more explosive movements. And the big one's just to just carry around, and it's just hard. So. Yeah, how many walk or laps around? Yeah, usually I just I walk to where I live. Uh, I live in the retreat of Clemson, so add for them. And then uh, I walk all the way down to where the guest parking is and, and back and stuff like that. And you can just hold it in different ways. So some ways it's harder to hold than others. Like you can put it on your shoulder. It's not as hard as if you're like carrying it in front of you or at like a weird position or something. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, it, it was, um, we were, when we were young, um, so I, I always wrestled growing up, my brother wrestled a lot, and that stuff is really good for, uh, kind of like combative sports, uh, like wrestling, like MMA, stuff like that, because while it's building, you know, strength endurance, it's also a lot of cardio as well, um, and my dad was in the army for a while, and, uh, he used to use, like, medicine balls and sandbags and stuff for his kind of training, and I always grew up just working out at the house in the garage all the way up until I got here. Um, and we just always had a sandbag. Well, this is a little late, kind of. Um, but you're from Tampa. Your friends and family, were they anybody affected by Hurricane Nancy? Uh, no. I'm, I'm for, yeah, fortunately, fortunately not. Um, so my, my family now, they actually live in Savannah, okay. uh, Savannah, Georgia. But uh, for, like, the friends and stuff that are down there, no one was severely affected. Um, obviously, there was... The storm hit there, but I don't think the storm surge really was too bad compared to like down in Fort Myers. Any questions for Putt from Zoom? Anybody else in the room? All right, thanks, Will. Yep.